And now we have a lot of branches now. We have uh, prepared release branches, developer of branches, bug fixing branches. We have the developer branch and we have the master branch. Still not enough branches um, because if you work, if you work on a like, new development, <coughs> so you develop a new feature uh, on your branch, um, you will find yourself that uh, uh, you work on a branch, you work on a feature, then you work on another feature, and you work again on the first feature, and so on and so forth. And after a while, you might drop a feature, and so on. So um, here's the same problem that if you work on one branch with all the all the, with all the changes of the new feature, it's pretty hard uh, to drop a feature then. If you figure out it's not good enough, or you figure out that you need to reuse some a lot of things. So that's why we do the same thing that we do with bugs, we do with features, is to create a new branch. So if we have, we develop uh, a branch, what we do is we create new branches <coughs> with new features. So if I start a new feature, first thing that I do is I check out the, the developed branch, I create a new branch from there, and I work on that. And it's called like uh, feature X or whatever. And so I have feature X, uh, the green, uh, bubbles, uh, feature Y, the red bubbles. And whenever a feature is ready, I go to the and say, um, what about merging it? It's great, it's the awesome feature, um, the most awesome feature. And uh, he will say, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> I will drop it, <laughs> probably, whatever. So um, these feature branches are really keeping track of just one feature. So it's uh, a complete development run which just contains your unique feature. And that makes it possible for you to work with other developers just on this front without, without um, uh, going in there or standing in the way of other people. So it's a good way to interact with other people while not uh, um, standing in the way of other people, um, not breaking things before you finish. Because in some version times, um, and PHP.net, People say, oh, we have a new feature, and let's push it into it. Um, we have, for example, um, we had strict, strict titans in PHP 5.4. So they pushed the, the commits for the titans into the, <coughs> the developed um, branch. And after three months, just before 5.4 alpha was proposed, they figured, no, strict typing is actually a bad idea. So let's get rid of it. Uh, so there was no way to just undo the changes with using the revision control system. But instead, they had to go into the files and remove all the stuff again. And it, it takes them like a day or so just to um, remove the feature from existing code because they just pushed all to the same branch. So to avoid this and to make things easier, also they don't look as easy, uh, easier in the first place, um, uh, PHP we use uh, feature branches um, most of the time. So I need to put, uh, put together all those things. You get this, and that's basically the, um, the image that you will see on the integrity page, uh, which is quite complex. But it works, and if you understand uh, each part of it, it's, uh, you will figure out it's a good idea. But uh, don't be scared. Uh, we, we, we didn't understand it in the first place, too. So, okay. so uh, that's, okay. that's just, uh, exactly. That's how you, how you buck, do a bug fix. You check out the developer windows. Uh, you create a new bug by the B option, you check out. Uh, check it out and uh, commit. Of course, your bug fix uh, to GitHub so uh, someone can review it and pull it from there. So um, I'm nearly finished with the, with the talk. Yeah, it's as bad. It was a little bit technical sometimes, and it's just one of these. One of it, it just um, scratched a little bit on the surface because like. It is much more complex uh, or much more powerful and at the same time um, not as difficult as it seemed in the first place. But uh, I will talk about this later about advanced features. If you have regression box um, a lot, if you deal with regression box a lot, uh, you probably want to see the, work, uh, the workshop later. 
Um, and we will go and really start coding and act on doing things on the command line. But before, a few words of warnings and a few words of back practices. Um, the bad thing when you deal with Subvert as with Git is forget what you learn from Subvert. Just forget <laughs> it. It's better that way, believe me. If you try to think from a subversion standpoint um, and do the things that way, you will probably have problems. You will definitely have problems. So um, try to focus on a few commands. Git has 140 commands. Um, try to focus on five or 10. It's enough for you. Um, try, to, um, try to use the command line if you if, if it's possible for you, uh, even on, on Windows, uh, the command on Windows is um, that's where the Linux kernel developers come in because Linux developed Git. That's why Git is uh, particularly fast on Linux and particularly, particularly slow on uh, Windows. So um, it is not designed to work on Windows, but it works on Windows. Um, so try to, to to focus on the command line because then you will get a feeling how it really works. And when, once you understood that, um, once you understand how it really works, uh, you can easily use uh, come up like a good find without bigger problems and without uh, uh, strange issues. And um, remember, Git is awesome as again it's not. Um, and here's a list of uh, Git clients, uh, a perfectly good client for um, <coughs> so JavaScript is, I think, very famous on Windows. Eclipse Eagle plugin, which scares me because they re-implemented the Git in the So um, it's a little bit scary. Uh, and probably the best one is for the Mac users is DX. Uh, here's the, I think the MD.com is where the guy um, who inspired us with choosing this way of branching and, um, and, and merging uh, first uh, tries to uh, make sense out of this picture and try to explain why it works the way it works. Git has the uh, it's the main website. You can uh, download their Git and you can, uh, there's, uh, there's a uh, link to Git books, online books about Git. Um, there's a uh, uh, mailing list and there for sure github.com of which um, is the main development platform or the most important hosting platform for here. So that was a little bit, a little bit uh, much for the for nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, questions? Yeah. Okay, so Alice and Bob yeah. both have identical repos on their local machines, which they call on from wherever each other master. Yeah. Um, how and when does the synchronization occur, and what initiates it? Uh, the synchronization is uh, uh, initiated by yourself. So you have to manually use the command push and pull to uh, exchange uh, change that between each other and synchronize them. So it's manually. But it goes like this, right? It doesn't go from Alex to Bob. You can't push it. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. Well, if you have access to his machine, obviously. Right. Or if he if he pulls from you, so that doesn't make it doesn't um, it doesn't matter if he uh, synchronizes from you or you uh, tries to synchronize <coughs> him by pushing, or if he pulls, it doesn't it's, it's not a big, it doesn't matter. And then how do clear absolute conflicts? I mean, one person has black and the other person has white in their code. How do those get resolved? Um, you will try to push, and you will get. Uh, uh, this is not a fast forward, and then you have to pull. And when you pull, uh, Git will see, oh, this is a conflict. Uh, please uh, resolve it first. And then you manually resolve it using a merge tool, whatever, uh, commit it, and then you can push it again. No questions? <laughs> Thank you.